welcome back to the Remote Control Podcast, a show where a couple of nerds geek out about movies, TV, comics, music, and more. I'm your host, Robert Slavinsky, and with me today is the ever-flamboyant Colton Bird. Is that a gay joke? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> gay? Gay? Uh, now, on today's show, we're going to discuss why Rotten Tomatoes and other sites are ruining, in my opinion, the cinema-going experience. We're also going to talk about a possible... Justice League Extended Cut, we're going to talk The Punisher, uh, Captain Marvel, as well as Batgirl. Uh, but before we really get into all of that, um, I'm going to take it down a notch and be a little real here. I want to talk about... I think you mean step it up a notch. Step it up a notch? Okay. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about this whole thing called net neutrality. Now, a lot of people may have heard a little bit about it. Uh, some people may have no idea what it means. Now, this is a pretty big deal because... It does affect us podcasters. Anybody who's in the podcasting world, this can affect them. Uh, but well, most, pretty much anybody. But most of all, if you utilize the internet, this is going to affect you in some way. Now, uh, a lot of this stuff that I'm going to go over here, I have like five pages. I'm not going to read it all. <laughs> word for word. But I'm going to cover kind of what it is so you have an understanding of what net neutrality is. So for quite a few years now, uh, it, net neutrality uh, was pretty obscure. It was a policy topic that most people... Um, only heard little bits and pieces about and it really only covered phone and cable companies uh, so open internet activists and a handful of tech firms and startups it also kind of affected now uh, let's see compared to major national issues like the economy national security healthcare and immigration net neutrality barely registered a blip on a lot of people's consciousness so uh, that's why a lot of people haven't heard of it prior to this now I know a few years back there was a good bit I was going around with net neutrality and stuff like that. Uh, but it's recently coming back and, and getting to be a big deal. So over the last few weeks, um, you may have seen on the news or the front page of the newspaper or something like that. The that, newspaper. <laughs> that they are planning on updating what is essentially internet regulations. Now, the le- there was a leak and people... the the internet on the people on the internet and people in the world are or not the world but the united states are freaking out about this because this could limit and screw over a lot of people who utilize internet basically as everybody source yeah um more so like who like i don't know how many people maybe have cut the cord which is what they say when you cut cable you know you cut the cord mm. and you go pretty much straight to streaming this could completely screw you over from that so what is net neutrality? Net neutrality is the idea that the internet should be an open platform. And broadband companies shouldn't be able to interfere with your right to access content and services online. Another way of putting it is that broadband giants like Comcast, Verizon, and AT&T shouldn't be able to block or discriminate against certain content, especially rival content, as it enters your home and reaches your computer. So this whole net neutrality thing... Net neutrality is a good thing. The, that mm-hmm. name is a good thing. So don't think, ah, oh, I don't want net neutrality. No, you want net neutrality. Yes, no, you want it desperately. The problem is there's companies out there, Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, all them there. What they're trying to do is, is get control so they can determine and, and decide what is allowed to be played at your house through the internet. What yeah. websites you can go on, what you can watch. You know, if Comcast doesn't want Netflix running to your house they could essentially stop it now it's not that extreme but what a lot of things that people are are saying and what they're they're figuring out is companies like that the big cable companies and internet companies what they're going to do is they're going to have different tiers of internet service yeah so if you're somebody who likes to stream videos a lot instead of paying your regular 80 dollar cable bill rate or internet bill right now it may bump up to $150. So cutting the cord so you didn't have to pay $150 for your cable and everything is, is now thing. you're shooting yourself in the foot. Exactly. So not only are you not paying that $150, but then you're paying your $10 or $12 a month for Netflix and you know the other $10 for Hulu and so on and so yeah. forth. So it really is going to screw people over. So net neutrality advocates believe that all internet users should have unfettered access to the internet, just like all Americans have right to travel anywhere in 50 states without a passport. Without this open access, which many internet users take for granted, startups like Google, Twitter, and Facebook might never have flourished, um, and that's what net neutrality and advocates are arguing. So that's a big thing. Like If you're somebody who's young, or not even young, you can be an older person, but you're trying to do a startup. Like you. Mm-hmm. you Getting in the game and the, and the internet business of, you know, different websites and stuff. Guess what? This is going to screw you over because yeah, you're not you able, can't. You, you just wouldn't be able to. So, 
I mean, I, I don't know. What, what have you read on it, Colton? Like I said, I have a whole bunch of stuff here. I don't know if I'm going to go through it all, but um, pretty much basically what you said, like big comp, bit, well, yeah. big time companies are basically wanting control of the internet, so that way they can charge you. This is going to be funny, but Pornhub would basically not be free anymore. No, exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> kids that listen to us, <laughs> but yeah, no, like it's it's ridiculous how the how we're trying to become like North Korea. Now, the FCC is involved um, over this or with this. And, um, you know, there's this is sketchy waters because it's going to be Congress and, you know, our politicians who are going to be voting on this, on deciding what to do with the Internet. Now, from what I understand, and I haven't gone into it that much, I don't believe there's any other country that limits their Internet. North, like communist countries. Well, yeah. I'm, okay, yeah. But like I'm saying, like you know, you take a look at you know the UK or yeah, you know, even Russia. I don't think does. Canada doesn't. You know, I mean, you you take a look and they they don't. They don't. They don't. And it's it. never a question. It's not a question. You know, it's a it's a free, essentially not a free, but an open platform, I should say. So the fact that they're going to be voting on taking control and allowing cable companies to control what comes in and out of your household, I think, is completely ridiculous. So. I'm not going to get too much into it because this is the, this podcast is supposed to be fun and everything like that. If you have questions, message me on the remote control uh, on on Facebook. Find us on Twitter, that kind of stuff. Because uh, if you do that, I will make sure you get the answers you need because I know what I'm looking for and how to find it. But most importantly, what I need you guys all to do, if you are completely against them regulating the internet and you know stopping and what you do essentially, you know, everybody uses the internet. Everybody uses hundreds of gig of internet a year. You know, if you don't want them to regulate that, you need to contact your politicians from DC. You need to call them. You need to tell them. Yeah. Uh, contact your senator. That exactly that you support that you support net neutrality. You know, you want to make sure that they do not limit us to what we can get on to. And again, it's very important for podcasters, people who run mm-hmm. web- websites and stuff like that. So that's why I thought it was important to talk about it. Uh, and hopefully this law, which I think they're voting on before they go on break uh, for the holidays, I think. Yeah, it's probably something that, that they're probably trying uh, to cram out. But yeah, they're uh, definitely, um, you know, call your politicians and tell them. So that is that. Uh, sorry for getting real there for a moment. Yeah, but Pornhub won't be free, and that's disappointing. So <laughs> contact your senators. We want free porn. That's the most important thing, free porn, right? We want free porn. <laughs> All right. So video game news. Uh, just really quick thing here with video game news. There is now a petition started to have Lucasfilm remove EA from the... Um, multi-year deal that they have to create the video games for Lucasfilm. How do you feel about that? This is getting absolutely ridiculous. I'm sick of these petitions. Look, I get it. Yeah, there's a petition for Justice League. I signed it. I'm all for it. But this is ridiculous. You've basically killed EA throwing a fit about microtransactions that they took out of the game. And they're listening to the people and they're fixing the game with patches. Yeah. And you're still trying to kill the company. Like, Please fucking stop okay, and get so over yourself. EA, EA is essentially two games into their deal. Essentially. You know, two major yeah. platform games. First one was sad. First one was disappointing. You know, but there were still thousands and thousands of people who loved playing it. I enjoyed it for a little while. It just got old after, you know. After, after the first weeks. three games. Yeah. <laughs> the second one, like I said, I, I'm not all for playing the, um, what's it called? The uh, vehicle. The Space. multiplayer. That's what I'm looking for. The multiplayer. But overall, uh, the single player was fantastic. I mean, I enjoyed it. I liked the new characters we got. Yeah, I had some issues with it, you know, with the horrible, <laughs> Luke. You know, with the horrible design <laughs> of Luke and such. But besides that, it was a fun game, and I'm looking forward to the downloadable content for that. If we even get it at this point. No, I think we will. It comes out on December 13th. Yeah, but that, that could be the only one we get now because everybody's bitching about it. Yeah, who knows? Uh, but again, I take a look at it. I, I think they have one other game in the works now, unless that game... I, I don't know if that game that uh, Respawn Entertainment is still on going on, even though EA just bought Respawn. I don't know what's going on there. But this petition is just dumb. Like, come yeah, on. Like, like, you're just throwing a fit to throw a fit. It, it, this this EA battle has escalated to the point where it's just dumb. 
It really is. Like, no one... Get your head out of your asses and quit picking on EA. Yeah. Like, That's pretty much what Yeah, I mean, people need to just stop. Yeah. Just stop. Uh, but yeah, with video games, that's about it. Um, there's nothing much more that we need to talk about. Uh, uh, so, did you ab- use and abuse the GameStop deal? The Black Friday deal? I didn't. No, I actually did no Black Friday shopping this year. I kind of was limited on funds, so... Couldn't do what I wanted to do this year. I I bought six games and a lot of pop figures. <laughs> Surprise there. What games did you get? Um, Stardew Valley, The Outlast Trilogy... Um. Now, what was the other one? Uh, oh, Ark, Ark Survival, Final Fantasy 15. I know I jumped on the bandwagon late with that one. Um, I bought two more. Oh, uh, Wildlands and uh, Seven Days Die. So I'll be pretty preoccupied for a while. <laughs> on top of playing Shadow of War still. So yeah, no, I used and abused it. Didn't get anything in uh, GameStop special 8-bit boxes, though. I got Predator and Mega Man, but I didn't get any, like, special, like, yeah. clone the dark ones or anything. Oh Lord God. giveth and the Lord you taketh away. You win some and you lose some. Yeah, they look cool, so. Uh, did you get a chance to watch Punisher yet? No. So, I did I've heard it. I've heard good things about it, though. Uh, it's fantastic. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it runs in the same problem that every Netflix Marvel show does. It's just a little too long. This one doesn't feel as long as the other ones do. Uh, they pretty much have a solid story from start to finish, unlike the other series where it's kind of like you have a story to like the sixth episode and then the last four or five episodes. You're like, we don't know what to do now. So, no. filler. Filler. Uh, this one, I think, only had one episode that I felt was filler, mm-hmm. and it was earlier on in the in the season but pretty much once you hit say episode six or seven it's just non-stop it's you're just like non-stop. punish me and uh I, I tell you what uh the the twist wasn't that shocking i kind of saw it coming plus if you know the characters you'll know what's coming but for the most part it's brutal absolutely it's a this if this was a movie series it would be a hard r like a hard fucking r with how much blood like there's a moment where uh Frank Castle punches a dude in the face and just fucks up his eye, like literally knocks yeah. his eye out of his face. That's his fucking eye. sweet. Yeah. Uh, what else? I mean, there's stabbing people, guts. You see person's guts coming out of their body. Like it's sickening, dude. It's that's fun. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So they they did it right. They they definitely did the Punisher right. Uh, just curious where they're gonna go after this season because um, much like I felt with the previous uh, shows, like. With Jessica Jones, for instance, I love that show. I still think that might be my second favorite. I think it would go Daredevil season one, Jessica Jones and Punisher one, two, three, like that. But like Jessica Jones season one utilized her biggest nemesis like that, mm-hmm. and so it's like, where are they going to go after that? Yeah, you it's know? like um, takes off shoe, shoots the biggest, off and the biggest nemesis for Frank Castle and the Punisher is the death of his family. You mm. know, like that's that's what drives him. It's not any one person. Yeah, there are people that drive him to, to kill them and stuff like that. And the people yeah. who killed his his family, stuff like that. That's what drives him. Uh, but it's the the main villain for him is is living with the pain, living with the horror that his family was killed. Yeah. And you know that's and it's a bit of a spoiler, but it's kind of rectified in the in the first season, like. He's not necessarily like at peace with it, but but he he feels good. Yeah, he's not like he was at the beginning of the season, yeah. season or even back in Daredevil season two. You know, it's a little bit different. So, um, yeah, I, I just I'm curious to see where they're going to go with season two of that. But I know right now they've filmed season two of Jessica Jones. They're in the middle of filming uh, Luke Cage season two, and they're filming Daredevil season three right now. Wow, that's three shows they're filming right now. All gonna come out next next year in in twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. That's how's your fantastic. life gonna do? How, how's your life gonna <laughs> that's, do? That's fantastic. I'm, I'm looking. Uh, I mean, uh, roll us back to the whole conversation we had. You really didn't have to buy those sheets for your bed because you're not gonna have a woman over <laughs> not anytime have a woman soon to, to come over. That's that's the damn truth. <laughs> Straightens the paper, swallows sadness, moves on to the uh, next but, topic. Yeah, if you haven't checked out Punisher, if you're a fan of Marvel TV shows, check out it. Check it out because it's fantastic. I loved it. Uh, it was again brutal, absolutely fucking brutal, brutal. It's like punish my beyond. beehole. Uh, I couldn't believe some of the things they put on there. Like I literally, there was times where I'm just like. 
Did they did they really just do that? You're like, damn. Yeah, and and the the chick who plays like the main detective, uh, Homeland Security detective, um, she's damn hot too. Like she like there's a, a scene where you see her ass and like, <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> You're like, clear his throat. <clears> throat> damn. <laughs> Uh, the Arrowverse Crisis on Earth X starts the day of recording. So we're recording on Monday. It starts tonight uh, with the first of the two-day crossover with Supergirl. And then the second episode, which is Arrow, will be tonight. And then Tuesday will be The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow to finish off the two-day crossover. I cannot wait to watch it. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be up online for me to watch tonight because we're recording while it's going on. Hopefully it's on so I can watch it pretty quickly. Uh, if not, then I will be checking it out tomorrow and you can see my... My feelings on everything probably Thursday once it's all said and done with and I can start posting on Twitter and Facebook. But I'm looking forward to it. Nerd. All right. (laughs) Yeah, you want to talk about nerd? Dragon Ball Super. Fuck yeah. (laughs) So what did you think of last week, 116? Um, It was cool. Finally got to see the uh, Ultra Instinct Kamehameha Wave. Badass. Right. He like kicked Kefla's ass. Dude, too. Kefla had no chance. Like, and what was so cool about it, and and he, you know, you see that Goku's starting to understand Ultra Instinct, yeah. and he's like, "All right, you know, like, right, this is all I, I can't can do. Punch, you know, yeah, because I can move. <laughs> but my body will dodge everything for me, and while it's dodging, I can start powering up. Yeah, an energy blast, and like it was smart. Like that's you know, that's Goku. That's how he is. So he was smart about it. So, yeah, eliminating Kefla was nice because I still think that she was a little OP. Do you think, though, that they're going to eliminate Universe 6? Is it 6? Champ Chompa? Yeah, that's 6. Do you, do you think they're going to eliminate him? I see. Because uh, that leaves the two Namekians as the only two fighters yeah, left, and they're I, fighting with Piccolo and Gohan I right now. That, I think they'll get eliminated. Uh, because I think the whole thing comes down to... I And I... I, I still believe Vegeta's going to win it. I, I do. I, he, he's he's trying to get Ultra Instinct, too. Yeah, in this week's episode 117, he tried to go Ultra Instinct, which was really cool because he... You know, he's, he's, he's just getting the shit beat out of him. Yeah, what, what's the guy's name? What universe was that? Uh, that was... He was the last, wasn't he? One of the last ones too from that universe. Yeah, I don't know, but it, it's stupid. He reminds me of like some stupid Mega Man. Yeah, like some stupid like Japanese show from like that, that the nineteen eighties that, that, that copied Power Rangers like Beetleborg yeah. or something like that. You know, yeah, it, it just reminded me of something. He stupid. changes like power form. And Vegeta's <laughs> just like, come on, bitch! And starts wailing into him for like fifteen seconds, and Vegeta's like, okay, I'm tired of it. And just yeah. fucking punches well, him in the gut. He felt like my. He was like, I'm gonna clear my mind and just let. Ultra Instinct take over like he thinks that's how it works and that's not exactly how it works. Yeah, so he he's, just gets his ass beat for no real reason. And I, I know a lot of people really believe that he's gonna, and I think you're one of them who thinks that Vegeta's gonna go Ultra Instinct the opposite way. Ultra Instinct with the... Oh no, I, that was uh, Jiren's the opposite way. That's okay. what I said. Well, Vegeta's gonna, he's gonna do it, but it's gonna be like long before, you know, long after it's relevant. Yeah, I, I yeah, I really don't know how that's how that's going. I I th- I, I want like say- Goku's gonna go like Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan seventeen, and Vegeta's gonna be like, I mastered Ultra Instinct. <laughs> that's how it's gonna go. Probably, probably. But it was an excellent uh, episode. One sixteen was excellent. One seventeen. It was kind of a filler because Universe Two they they have this stupid like love warriors who run around like I'm gonna kill you with love, and it's like bitch. <laughs> It's like, yeah, no. It's like, this isn't how this works. No, no. So uh, they they actually, Universe 2, now Goku defeated Kefla, but because after he defeated Kefla, his energy was completely used up, so he's drained, and he's sitting there. Yeah, he's just like kneeling back. in the middle, and and everybody's like, I came to fight and well, fuck. Well, all of Universe 2, all, what, five of their fighters? Five or six, yeah. Five of their fighters came over and were like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> like Bukake on Goku. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> the the two women of that universe who fight with the power of love uh, were like, no, he's... I believe in a thing called love. <laughs> <laughs> that should have played when they came out. That would have been awesome. Um, anyway, so they came to, to fight him and they go to attack him and Android 18 and 17 interfere. 17 and 18. Why did you do that? Why did I do that? Yeah, the backwards. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> we're not high. No, we're not. We are completely sober. <laughs> that drinking Kool Aid, uh, but. It was, you know, they, they stepped in, and now Android 18, for some reason, I guess she hurt her ankle somehow, which I don't remember seeing. It was probably one of those off-camera off, off yeah, camera fights. I just, yeah, I don't remember seeing her hurting her ankle. So her ankle's hurt, and 17 comes over and bandages it up a little bit. He's like, I bandage up animals while being a ranger, so I know yeah, how to do this. I used to fucking kill people, but now I'm a ranger. <laughs> so, Rectifying my soul. That doesn't exist. So uh, they interfere and they start fighting the two warriors and eventually they defeat them. Uh, but now after they defeat them, the rest of the Universe 2 is kind of teaming up on Goku and they're like, let's get him! And that's kind of where the episode ended. So I'm telling you, Frieza's going to step in. I don't know, we didn't see Frieza at all this episode. I know. He's probably just watching and when Goku starts to get his ass beat, he's like, yeah, and comes in and just kicks her ass. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I, I think Frieza understands that the chance, the best chance of the survival of Universe Seven is Goku. Yeah, and if it's I, not him, it's I think Goku. He understands that, and I think he's going to make sure that uh, anything that happens, to, you know, is going to be in their control. Yeah, you know, so he's going to make sure Goku gets his rematch with Jiren because Goku's the only one that could go toe to toe. What if like Frieza <clears throat> and Goku fuse, fuse and make a baby? <laughs> That would be weird. That'd be awesome. Frizu, Frieza, Frieza, uh, Go, Gozi, Go, Goza, Goza, Goza. <laughs> Throws Batari earrings. Vegeta, or not Vegeta. Frieza just shoves it up his ass because he doesn't have ears. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're done with some, the some talk fucking freaking nature blob <laughs> thing starts fighting. Uh, on random movie news, Incredibles 2 teaser. Oh, has, I'm so fucking excited. It has it. become the most viewed animated trailer of all time. How many views? Uh, I don't know what it is now. And I don't know. You can look it up real quick if you want. You gotta... I got one of them cellular, devices. cellular devices. Wait, hold on. Keep talking. We're going to fill talking, the void here. Talking, talking, talking. Okay, not like that. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Okay. Uh, don't I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing Incredibles I think it's too. funny that the Incredibles is like... A movie that's going to be geared more towards kids, and there's going to be like old as adults well, I mean, that watched it. the first one are now ready for the second yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, I saw. Now I wasn't a kid when the first one came out. You were. I was. Uh, but uh, you know, I was mid to late teens, I think. Gay. And uh, I absolutely, I, I thought it was the best superhero movie for the longest time. Thirty-five million views. Yeah. So thirty-five million five hundred sixty-four thousand eight hundred fifty-two views. But to I be exact, I can't. I can't wait for that. I think it's going to be excellent. I hope it's going to be excellent. It it probably will. Yeah, it's the Incredibles. Uh, it appears the X Men spinoff Gambit will begin production early next year. And in quotations here, I went ugh. <laughs> Put more emphasis on that. Ugh. I don't think they believe you. All right, look. Uh. <laughs> oh, that kind of. <laughs> that's a good one, man. <laughs> Uh, I, I just I don't want to see I don't want to see Channing Tatum play Gambit. I just don't want to see it. Tatum Channing, Channing Tatum, whatever his name is. <laughs> Look at the fucking audio wave. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely don't want to see him play Gambit. I've given up kind of on the X Men series. I haven't. Like I'm looking forward to uh, New Mutants. I think you know that horror vibe that it's it's bringing. I'll see that just because it's a horror film. I want to see Dark Phoenix only because I want to see Dark Phoenix done right, and I'm hoping and praying that they get it right this time. Uh, I I love The Gifted on Fox. Like that's an excellent show. Legion was fantastic on Legion FX was last good. year. So when does season X- two from Legion come out? Uh, I think I think we talked about this a few weeks. I think it's like a mid season thing. I think it'll be like February or March. Or something. Oh my lanta. Yeah, so looking forward to those, but not Gambit. <laughs> not Gambit. I'm no, like, I like I like Legion. I yeah, watched Legion. Before. I watched Legion after you and Brian hyped it all up. Oh, sorry. He who shall not be named hyped it up. Go back through him. Where's that? Okay, no. 20, 24 and a half. I'm going to beep that out. Ew. Ew. So we got really quiet there and all your <laughs> papers wrinkling. <laughs> uh, we got a nice little gif or jif as i like to call them uh peanut butter we got some peanut butter <laughs> really it wasn't i mean it was more of just a little 
like 30 second clip of peanut butter Chris Pratt with a baby raptor from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom so that's tits you the know. one that posted it in the group <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I wonder if how, I wonder how cool it is. I don't know. You fucking posted it in the group. I'm hoping you looked at it. You probably were just like, oh, this. Share. Didn't even look at it. Just keep going, scrolling through your day, looking for some dank memes. <laughs> damn it, Colton. You're in charge of Facebook social media, damn it. That's totally what the fuck happened to <laughs> <laughs> I was scrolling. I was like, "Oh shit, this looks cool." It's <laughs> <laughs> actually play by play. <laughs> no, that doesn't tell you we hang out too much together. <laughs> Hold on, because I shared I shared a meme right after I found it. Hold on. <laughs> I don't want to hold on. Uh, but I, I think we're going to start seeing some more stuff come out for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom probably over the next few months because it comes out next July. So <laughs> may even see some kind of teaser trailer. Trailer probably. I would say Super Bowl or around the Super Bowl we'll probably see something for Jurassic World. This is the meme I uh, the pillow fight I've seen before. <laughs> bunch of black people like driving up like shit's gonna go down and they come running out with pillows <laughs> as we had to do the audio version <laughs> all right marvel news jude law cast or possibly cast in captain marvel as kree warrior marvell also known as dr walter Man. lawson now i'm not real original with the name <laughs> well i'm I, i'm not too familiar with captain marvel lore but if I'm not mistaken, I believe he was the actual original Captain Marvel for Marvel Universe, not the original Captain Marvel, because the original Captain Marvel is from the DC Universe, who's now named Shazam. All confusing. Yeah. <laughs> it had something to do with um, the rights for the name Captain Marvel expired, and DC and Marvel had a, a fight about it. And Marvel yeah. Ended Stan, up winning, or DC. Stan Lee walked right up to DC Studios and punched everybody in the fucking face. <laughs> but... Um, I, if he was the original Captain Marvel, if I'm wrong, please yell at me now or whenever you can. Um, but he was the original Captain Marvel until Carol Danvers took over after his death. Now, Carol Danvers is going to be played by Brie Larson in the Captain Marvel film. And Brie Larson? Yes, Brie Larson. What's she playing? She was in... That the, name sounds she super... She was in Kong Skull Island. That's the most recent thing that you would probably remember her from. Uh, but, yeah, so... Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Man, this episode's like stumbling and bumbling. Uh, you, because you don't, you didn't. Sorry, I was looking for memes, yeah. and I fucking <laughs> shared something I didn't look at. You don't, don't act like you don't fucking do it. Uh, I usually look at stuff that I I share in the group. I try to at least. I will say eighty nine point nine percent of the time. <laughs> Looks at Bob suspiciously. Uh, can you believe it? Last week we forgot to talk about the Deadpool trailer. I can believe it because last week you were in my boat, and we were both on the Justice League the hype train. Then, well, we we hopped off that train and we're going on to the Star Wars train. And you will hear all about that on Star Wars talk this week. So, Deadpool teaser trailer. What did you think about it? It was pretty cool. Yeah, I liked it. I liked the. It was a neat concept. I liked the whole Bob Ross playing off the of Bob Ross type of thing. I like that. You know, that's a pop figure already. They made Deadpool a Bob they, yeah. They made a Deadpool Pop Ross like the next day. It was announced. I was like, holy shit. Um, no, I, I I really I really dug that, and um, it was just good fun shenanigans. I know that some people there were actually some people who thought it was a little over the top for Deadpool, but I feel that it it fit him perfectly. Did you watch the first movie? Yeah. <laughs> like... um, and then you know I thought that's all we were gonna get. Like whenever I first started watching i was like all right this is cool you know just hyping up the movie we're not gonna get it and then boom they were like here's some scenes and yeah a quick little like what is it like 20 seconds of of scenes from the movie and are just snippets you know just quick mm -hmm. snippets and um i definitely am looking forward to that movie more and more that i see things i'm so mad that they pushed the date to june as opposed to when it came out in february the first one came out in february like i wish it would have kept the february date for deadpool because then it'd just be here in a few months but it's I'm, not so. I've like I was a fan of the first one. The first one was 
hilarious because this was i just recently believe it or not believe it or not guys just recently got into uh comic book films believe it or not whoa you just got into comic book films yeah right that's crazy crazy <laughs> not like we've been doing a, a, a podcast about it or anything so uh, <coughs> sorry You're dying so no i watched the first one going in it was actually me and my mom's first rated r movie that we watched together Deadpool? Yep. That's weird. Saw a radar movie with my mom when I was like six. She had to cover my eyes because there were boobies on the screen. Yeah, no, this was the first one that she didn't cover my eyes because there were boobs mm-hmm. on the screen. It was funny. It was funny because I was laughing at dick jokes and she was sitting there like serious. I was like... <laughs> She's like, I can't laugh. She's like, I can't. I got to be a role model. And I was like, <laughs> dick. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, the whole baby hand. <laughs> Fucking lost it during the whole baby hand scene, too. I was, I, like, and that scene was happening, and I kept thinking of the dude from Scary Movie 2. Uh, take my stroke! Take my stroke! Oh, my God. I love that movie. All right. Some big news actually fell to, actually, over the last two days. Yesterday, some scenes, Did you help it up? Some scenes leaked for the upcoming film Infinity War. Oh, my God. Movie. Yes. Uh, now, most of the scenes did not have audio. Uh, they were just kind of, like... They were like short five seconds. Short five second scenes. You just see some of the characters. A lot of it was a Scarlet Witch I saw, but there was one of the scenes in there that actually had dialogue, and it was of the Guardians actually back where the Collector is, who was played by Benicio del Toro in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, and they're back at his little den thingy, den thingy where he has all his things that he's collecting, being a collector, and there's <laughs> somebody say. talking to him. And it sounds like Thanos. Now, you don't see Thanos, and there's a lot of times where, like, the scene is going, and then it'll cut to black. It's because they haven't finished the CGI. You know, that's that's the cut scenes where they're going to add Thanos. Yeah. And stuff like that. So, you know Thanos is there. You know he's sitting there talking to the Collector who's laying on the ground. You see the Guardians kind of sneaking up on that. On, on well, the kind of sneaking up. Until Drax is like, I'm going to kill him. And he kind of yeah. goes off. But... Yeah, it was excellent. It makes me excited because it brought the humor that the Guardians had in the first Guardians of the Galaxy and the second one. You know, again, the second one. To a one, lesser degree. The <laughs> second one was over jokey, but the first one was excellent. But, you know, it has the jokes, but then you felt the seriousness with Thanos there and looking for I, what stone was. I can't remember what stone it was. Uh, soul? Soul stone. Something mm, so So, yeah, I think it may have been the soul stone, but he's looking for, you know, one of the yeah. infinity stones. So I thought it was excellent. I thought it worked out or played out great. Um, with that said, Vanity Fair then right, today. I was, uh, nice segue. Nice segue. Uh, Van- Vanity Fair then today released covers of their upcoming issue. There's four covers of the Avengers on there, and um, they're excellent. I post them in the remote control. I post them on Twitter. If you haven't seen them yet, you can find them there, or just go to type in Vanity Fair on Google. Avengers we'd pre- cover. We'd prefer you not to. Yeah. Get to the remote to, control. Jump to our, our, our group hey, and join jo- in. join the group. Subscribe on YouTube. Like us anywhere, because then you'll be entered to win a layup up figure. Yeah. So do that. It'll be awesome. Uh, but anyways, the, the pictures are cool. I like them. They're they're sleek. They're nice. Uh, I think it's interesting that Thor has both eyes. Okay. Yeah. So spoilers, <laughs> if you have not seen... It's, I think it's Ragnarok. been well enough that but, if, yeah, you've, Thor, if you would Thor loses see an eye in Ragnarok. Now, Thor did state, or Thor, uh, Chris Hemsworth <laughs> stated. <laughs> Technically, you're not wrong. Yeah. But Chris Hemsworth did state that he would not have, he would be wearing the eye patch in Infinity War. He did state that. So they could just be putting it on Vanity Fair without the eye patch because they may feel that people yeah. haven't seen it yet. But the most interesting thing that I felt was on that same cover was Thor was holding Mjolnir in his hand. And Mjolnir was destroyed in and Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Spoilers. No, it's not spoilers. It was in the, the previews. Spoilers. So, what the hell? So, how does he get Mjolnir back? Fake. Gonna have to find out. No, I'm kind of excited Hacks. for that. Uh, so, one other thing when it comes to the Infinity War. Uh, Joe and Anthony Russo, the, director of the, the directors of the film released on their Twitter accounts a number three that was all happy and smiley facey. That was a creepy three. <laughs> like, of all things to put on there, you had to put that specific three. That's like, have you ever watched Wonder Shows in? Like, that Russian, like, learning show that used to be on MTV at, like, two in the morning? No. It was weird, and there was a three on there that looked identical to that. <laughs> that may have been that. It was fucking creepy. Uh, but people are speculating, could this mean that there's a trailer coming in three days? Now, three days from now would make it November 30th. 
or they could be yeah. pushing it to November, or December 1st. <coughs> We're not really sure where it's going to land uh, because a lot of people think it's going to be December 1st because that's the premiere of, um, what you call it, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC. Yeah. Kind of makes sense to premiere with that. However, if it premieres a day or two beforehand, I think that would be fine. Also, yeah. and then you can show it again on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So we'll see what happens, but you know, keep an eye out on Twitter, on Facebook, everywhere in three days because we're probably going to get something. Pull, pulls Facebook. eye out, watches it. <laughs> uh, now there's Look, stating, looks like Thor. There, now we've known for a while that the trailer has been done and made and everything. It's just been sitting on a shelf for a little while. It looks like the trailer is going to run at two minutes and fifteen seconds. So that's really long. I can only run for like fifteen seconds max because you're out of shape. Feel good about yourself? <laughs> All right. So I know you guys, a lot of people think, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of people think that we're a little biased when it comes to DC and everything like that. <coughs> <coughs> Rachel. Uh, but <laughs> <coughs> but uh, there is kind of a lot of stuff that's going on. Now, Justice League came out a week ago, a little more than a week ago. Uh, I've seen it three times. Colton's seen it a couple times. We've loved- making a nice box office turnaround. Yeah, it's it made a nice box office. It's it is now going to be, um, it's at least going to break even now. We yeah. know that much, and I think it's going to be profitable. I think, I, I think I said this before. I thought it was going to be a billion dollar movie. I don't know what the reason is why it didn't re- why why it struggled so much in the box office. I we'll talk about that later. But. <laughs> Um, I think it'll make. It's probably going to make BVS money, eight hundred to eight hundred and fifty. That's what I think it's going to make, and that just makes sense. And it's it'll still be profitable then at that point, because they made it for three hundred million. Uh, you figure the marketing was probably another hundred, hundred fifty million. You know, and then when you look at everything else, you know, you, you, probably to be profitable, it needs to make about seven hundred to yeah. be profitable. You know, and. It's gonna make seven hundred. I, you know, I, yeah, I, it's gonna. It, yeah, it, it, the thing is, that the next two weeks are gonna be massive for it because after these two weeks are up, Star Wars, Star is. Wars comes out, and the same audience that's gonna see Star Wars would have seen Justice League. So those fans need to go see Justice League before they see Star Wars for it to be like. Profitable. We, I think it will. we need to see it fourteen more times. Yeah, but before I move <clears throat> on to our next DC topic, what I want to do is my kids were over this weekend for Thanksgiving weekend. And they really, really, wow, really, have, really dating the episode. Ah, whatever. They really, really wanted to talk about Justice League because they saw it, they loved it, um, and they just wanted to talk about it. Now, my oldest son is eight years old, my youngest son is six, and then my daughter is three. Now, I took all three of them to see it. Uh, my daughter, on one hand, you know, she was kind of in and out of the movie. She sat on my lap the whole time, and there were moments where she was like, "Oh, look, you know, it's it's Batgirl." When she's talking about Wonder Woman, she's putting a Wonder Woman thing. It's Batgirl. It's it's adorable. Uh, but the moment that we'll, really, we'll ignore her name's Harley Quinn. Yeah, her name is Harley Quinn, and I've mentioned that multiple times. And again, she's three. And if you do your math, that was before Suicide Squad came out. So it wasn't because of Suicide Squad that I named her that. It's, I've been a fan of Batman and Harley Quinn for a long time, as was my daughter's mother. So that's beside the point. We're going to jump to everything else. They really liked the movie. My, my daughter really liked the Superman scenes. Uh, so <laughs> they Where he fuck shit up. My, 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 they, my kids just want to talk about it. So I'm going to play a little clip here. I sat down with them. They've been wanting to podcast for a while. So I'm going to play a clip here where I just sat down with them and we just talked Justice League. And here you go. Hey, everyone. Now, despite what critics are saying about Justice League, it is a massive hit, especially with the young crowd. Now, with me today, I have my two sons, Chase and Bobby. Say hi. 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 <laughs> All right, now they so desperately wanted to get on this podcast and talk about Justice League. So, guys, what was it that you liked the most about Justice League? What was your favorite part? When Superman got alive with the mother box. Okay. What did you like, Bobby? Whenever they were fighting. <laughs> what part? They fought a lot in that movie. Whenever they were fighting, the guy who was... Trying to get the mother box. So Steppenwolf, the big bad guy? Yeah. Okay. So what else did you like about it? I also liked when Superman was beating up Batman. I know why he was doing that, because like in Batman vs. Superman, Batman won and and Superman was real mad. True, yes. And whenever... Well, how did you? Okay. Well, how did you like the Flash? Did you guys like the Flash? Yeah. I see. I liked the Flash. I think the Flash was one of my favorite characters. I liked when the Flash 
touch the mother box, then it like got Superman on. So you guys really like how Superman came back to life. Yeah. See, that's the thing that I like the least about it, but you guys like the most. So you can see how this movie is, is, you know, different people like different things about it. I didn't like that aspect, but my kids loved it. Uh, What about Cyborg? Did you guys like Cyborg? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's all you just, yeah? You yeah. Nothing to say about him? Well, when he started fighting, it was cool. Okay. Because <laughs> his hand can turn into a gun. Yes, yes, again. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Aquaman. Did you guys like Aquaman? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. What did you like about Aquaman? Guys, I'm very talking. This is, this is a podcast, guys. You got to talk. You, you're shaking your head and just standing there. That, that nobody can see that. It's a podcast. You got to talk. Like when he went underwater. And that's what Aquaman does. <laughs> what else? Um, I like whenever he. Smashes bad guys with his weapon. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Who else was in the movie? Uh, Batman. What did you guys think about Batman? <laughs> he, he was his, good. His cape and everything. His cape? Yeah. <laughs> Even his, his cape looks super black. Well, he wears black. He's, he's Batman. <laughs> Even his battering. Yeah? Battering. Well, okay, what was your favorite part with the Flash? When he turned into the Flash and he ran everywhere in the Batcave. Oh, so whenever whenever they show up in the Batcave and yeah. he runs around and he goes, it's a cave. Yeah. It's a Batcave. Yeah, you like that part? Yeah. What'd you like? Whenever the Flash like, runs super fast like a tornado can spin real fast. Okay. I liked when Flash saved those kids, like, just run and just took them somewhere. Mm. Oh, oh, uh, you mean at the, near the end of the movie with the truck? Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman, what did you guys think about Wonder Woman? Good. I like her. My daughter's in the room, too. I don't know if you can hear her. I'm over here, hi. So, okay. uh, my daughter Harley, and she's actually named after Harley Quinn from Batman. So, you know, big Batman family. But she really liked Wonder Woman. So, how did you like Wonder Woman? Yeah. Now she's shy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what do you guys want to talk about? Let's just talk. What do you guys? What, what's so besides Superman coming back to life? What else did you like? Or what didn't you like? You don't need to raise your hand. You can just talk. Well, when Superman unsold his house, but it was sold because he died, so he unsold it. Well, Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne bought Superman's mom's house, so he bought that back. Yes. What else? Come on, talk. You guys about want to talk when, about this so bad. I know. About when Wonder Woman was covering the the guy who was shooting with her. Metal stuff. Uh, her her gauntlets on her wrist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You you like the the moment when in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, when she um un, when she saves the terminal. So who do you think would win in a race, Superman or the Flash? Flash. Flash. You guys think the Flash would win in a race? Well, yeah, yeah. he can run fast. Well, yeah, but so can Superman. Did you see that moment in the movie whenever Flash was, yeah. was running really fast and Superman yeah. saw him Whoa. and started fighting him? Him. Yeah. He goes so fast. Yeah, yeah, Superman does run fast. But about if Superman freezes Flash, so Superman could just go straight ahead. Could possibly happen. What, Harley? Um, so, um Batman don't... Run. Batman, oh, well, he doesn't run fast. He does run, though, but not fast like the Flasher or, or Superman. Yeah. Um, Batman 
and Batman flies. Yeah, he can fly. In his but not like bat Superman plane. that much. In his bat plane. And he has a bat car and he drives every everywhere in it. Batmobile. I mean, yeah. Batmobile. <laughs> Hello. It's also a bat car. Whatever. <laughs> bat car, Batmobile. All right. Um, what is your favorite? Who is your favorite hero in Justice League? I, Flash. I say Flash. Flash is your favorite. Mine is... Did I ask that already? How many have asked that already? I don't know. Flash. I like, I like Wonder Woman. You like Wonder Woman. All right. You. Bobby. What's been your favorite movie so far? I know that you guys saw Batman uh, vs. Superman and, and Justice League. I mean, out of the two, The Dark Knight Rises. I mean, the Dark Knight Rises. Out of the two that I just told you. Okay. Batman vs. Superman or Justice League? I mean, Justice League. I mean, Justice League. I like Harley Quinn one. You like Suicide Squad? No, Harley Quinn. Well, Harley Quinn's in Suicide Squad. That's the only movie uh-huh. she no, was in. No, I didn't in. watch that. Yes, you have. No, uh okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big one. Yes, it is a big microphone. And, and that one. Yes. And this is a power one. Yes. I don't need a small one. <laughs> so what else? Come on. <laughs> I'm thinking. Okay. Let me think. I have nothing to think about. <laughs> nothing to talk about? Anything from you, Bobby? Uh, when Batman shows the Flash everything. What do you mean when Batman shows the Flash everything? I think he means like when they went in the Batcave and Batman showed him everything. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Alright, anything from you, Harley? You have anything to say? Mm-mm. No? Um, All right. Well, guys, thank you for joining and talking about Justice League. Make sure you tell all of your friends to go see it because we want them. We wanted we wanted to make a whole bunch of money so they make more, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So tell uh-huh. all of your friends to go see it when you get to, back to school this uh, what Tuesday. Tell all of your friends yeah. to go see it. All right. Bye. Bye. Or watch it tomorrow. Or watch it tomorrow. tomorrow. All right. So uh, if you guys want to say bye, this was Chase. Bye. Bobby, and Harley, say bye. 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 So, uh, I mean, they're, they're adorable. <laughs> they absolutely are. So, I hope you like that. I am planning on getting them involved more with the podcast because my two my two kids, my two sons, I shouldn't say kids, my two sons, um, absolutely love playing video games. They watch Let's Play stuff on YouTube all the time. It was actually really cute the other day. We were over at my mother's house, and they were playing Roblox on my mom's computer. And then my son had his tablet, and he just he started recording on his tablet what they're playing on the computer and talking like they're talking to people watching, kind of how people do with Let's Plays. He said it's real adorable. They love doing that kind of stuff. You know, they're definitely following in my footsteps in a way. Uh, they love they, they do what we do. Yeah, and they, they love coming over and seeing all my podcast stuff set up, and they start talking to me about what's this for, what does this do, how do you do this. Uh, my oldest son, you may even see if you go on our YouTube channel, you'll see him sometimes comments on our videos like, hey, that's my dad, and hi, daddy, and stuff like that. So it's adorable. He's He has a good time. He likes doing uh, you know stuff and, and learning about the podcast side of things. So probably going to get him involved, uh, definitely him more involved from time to time, and my other son as well, my daughter. She doesn't quite understand. She's three years old. I'm sure you heard her on you know a little bit ago. She's just adorable and cute and just funny, you know. But um, we'll see where that all goes with my kids. Hopefully you enjoyed it. So we're gonna go on with that. But getting on to the DC news, Justice League Ultimate Edition. People want an extended cut of the film. The question is, will we get it? Now, according to Grace Randolph of Beyond the Trailer, uh, she talked about her secret visit to Warner Brothers, and she stated that she actually knows of a three hour long Snyder cut of the film. So does this mean we'll get it? Now I have a whole bunch of bullet points here that we're going to go over. Uh, So there was then a tweet made from a man named Shiraz 
Faruqi or Faruqi or something. I don't know. Weird. Hi, Chaz. Weird Indian. Shiraz. Shiraz. Hi. Weird Indian name or Middle Eastern name or something. I don't know. Now, he states, I can... He's actually from Texas. Oh, okay. Probably. (laughs) (laughs) He goes, I can confirm from a direct source that a Zack Snyder cut of Justice League exists with mostly finished VFX and Junkie XL score. Now, someone then pointed out that the studio hated that version, to which Faruqi replied, correct, but that doesn't mean it won't see the light of day. I'm just confirming that it exists and that a lot of VFX is done and a good portion of JXL's work, JXL being Junkie XL. Now, the way I look at it is if these reports are true and a Snyder version does actually exist, I would say there's a decent chance that we may see it. My whole thing was last week as all this stuff was coming up and the petition started and everything like that, as that started to come out, I was like, look, yeah, I'm going to sign the petition because I want to see it. Mm-hmm. But I was keeping my expectations low because this is much different than what happened with Batman vs. Superman. Batman vs. Superman was made. They made a three-hour-long version of the movie. Mm-hmm. They showed it to the execs, and the execs said, it's too long, you have to cut some things out and stuff like that. So Zack Snyder had to go cut things out and just rearrange some scenes, and then he released it which was the two-and-a-half-hour version that we got in theaters. The poop version. That is what happened. All right? They also took out some of the blood and gore and stuff like that, but that's what happened with BVS. Now, um, with that, this is a bit different because I stated last week that Justice League was made. There was possibly a three-hour cut that Zack Snyder made. Showed it to the Warner Brothers execs, and they said, ah, uh, no. Opens anus, inserts fist. So at that point, because it was so early on in development still, they said, we're going to hire Josh Whedon on to do some rewrites to lighten the tone a little bit. And we want to do some reshoots. Which they lightened way too much. So Josh Josh comes in. He does the rewrites. They all plan for their reshoots like like normal all studios do. You know, that's mm. what they do. They plan. This was not unplanned reshoots. These were planned reshoots. And... Then the unthinkable happened where Zack Snyder's daughter, you know, uh, took her own life and he decided to step aside. You know, tragic, tragedy, it was tragic. It's but, an understandable yeah. thing. So he, he stepped aside and Josh Whedon took over. He then did the reshoots and then made a cut of the movie. So last week, as I was saying, when you have that scenario there, you don't have a Zack Snyder copy or version that is completed. Yeah. It's partially complete. You know, there's no, there's not all, in my case, I figured that VFX were very rough, if yeah. at all done, and that there wasn't a score. Mm. Because I was under the impression that while Junkie XL did start working on the movie, I didn't think he got to the part of actually scoring the movie at all. Yeah. So it could have been filler, stand in music. A lot of times what uh, filmmakers were, will do whenever they start making early drafts of movies, they'll take music from their previous films or music that... In, fits the scene fits the tone and scene and inserts it so you know when they're showing it to the execs they can get a feeling of what, yeah. what's going on so that's kind of what I figured they're talking about when they say oh Junkie XL score I'm guessing it's probably going to be music from BVS mm. so that's what I was thinking now it sounds like from this guy he says he has a reliable source I don't know who this guy is <laughs> he talks to Zack Snyder himself yeah but I mean if there's some of that stuff done it's a very good possibility that we're going to see some kind of extended cut and then I want to ask is it possible if there's a cut like that, if they are willing to release that, why not go back and release the David Ayer version of Suicide Squad that had more scenes with the Joker and, you know, it was a bit longer and a little deeper and darker? Why not do that? You know, if you're going to go like that with all of your films at this point, like Wonder Woman, I'm sure there was an extended cut that, that was made and they decided to cut things out and stuff. Wonder Woman's a great movie. I just rewatched it this weekend. Mm-hmm. We actually had a nice, intelligent conversation about DC there for a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was a fantastic... It, it's fa- it is a fantastic movie. You don't need an extended cut or more of that. I wouldn't mind if there was. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not a necessary thing. But it's thing. not necessary. You know, Man of Steel, another great movie that is not necessary to have an extended cut. Batman vs. Superman, was it, it was kind of necessary, I think. Justice League, I don't think, is necessary. I think... It wouldn't hurt it. It's a great film in itself, but it could hurt it. Because, again, like, you take a look at Batman vs. Superman... And you take a look at the theatrical version and then the extended cut. There's it's like nothing, two completely different films. No, there's nothing <clears throat> added in the extended cut that changes anything that happened in the theatrical cut. 
All right. Yeah, they are. It feels like two different films. Yeah. But there's nothing in, in the other film that changes where the, the story is going. It, it fixed some scenes. It fixed scenes, but it doesn't change. Like, the whole overarching well, story yeah. is not changed. Okay? It just actually makes you aware of the overarching story better. If we get a director's cut or an extended cut of Justice League or a Snyder cut of Justice League, from the sound of it, it's completely different than the way that they're moving with this franchise. So if they release it, they're going to have to say, look, this is a great movie, or you, you may like it, but that's, that's not a, canon. Yeah, This, this is, is canon. The, the Josh Whedon and Zach version is, is, is canon. So enjoy that all you want, but that's not canon. But do you think like, that's going to happen? At, well, theoretically saying if they did Suicide Squad like that, you would run into the same problem. Exactly. So that's why... I, I mean, necessarily it wouldn't hurt Suicide but, but Squad. But I, I fear that's what's going to happen, and we're not going to get it for that reason. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, look, Zack Snyder likes the petition that's going around. No. He liked a post on Instagram that said, hey, we want to you know, get a petition. He yeah. liked, that doesn't mean that he supports it. That doesn't mean he signed it. That doesn't He's mean like, oh, hey, that. people are talking about me. Exactly. So I think that's all it is. Uh, I'm sure he's flattered that people want to see his version. You know, I know his son came out and spoke like, look, I know what the, the original movie was. What WB and, and Josh Whedon did, you know, is vastly different than what my dad put together. But it's still a good movie. Go see it. Yeah. You know, so... I think that's kind of what, you know... Is I mean, I'm not going to complain if it comes out. No, I mean... You're going to take all my money anyway. Exactly. I mean, I'm buying Justice League when it comes out. I have it pre-ordered if it already. A, if it has an extra disc with the Zack Snyder version on it... Yeah, it's. why not do, like, something like that? Just give it a nice box yeah. edition. I mean, and... you, could, you could sell Justice League as is, so the theatrical cut with special features for 30 bucks. Yeah. Sell a Zack Snyder version that has the Zack Snyder version in it, sell for 40 bucks. Exactly. You know? Throw in a couple, like, shirts or something. Make it like the Spider-Man Homecoming that just came out, that special edition. Mm-hmm. <coughs> oh, you're dying. If you watch our Facebook li- or Facebook group, we do uh, Funko Box unboxings now. The Spider-Man Homecoming basically has that. It's like the Blu-ray DVD digital copy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it has a, a exclusive pop figure, and then it has like a shirt, a pair of socks, and like keychains and odds and ends things like that. Yeah. So do something like that. Fuck it, fifty bucks, and you get all that stuff. I would do it. I mean, the biggest thing it comes down to is money. Yeah, you know that's the biggest thing. But I wouldn't be surprised if it also comes down to pride with WB, because think of this: think that they release the Zack Snyder version, and the people, the love masses, it. love it, and they're like, "This is vastly better than a Josh Whedon version." Well, it's going to hurt their pride because they're the ones that wanted it recut. And they're going to be like, yeah. oh, shit, we don't know shit. You know? Yeah. And then what does that do to the perception? Because let's say they release the Zack Snyder version. People watch it. People love it. They don't care about the, the, the Justice League that came out with Whedon's version. Then the next movie, say Aquaman, comes out next year. And then we, we start hearing soon about reshoots and you know needing to recut yeah. it and stuff like that. And then people are going to be like... No, just give us the original James Wan version. We don't yeah, want. Yeah, the and WB then it's gonna shit. be shit. And and it's just gonna it's gonna be turmoil when it comes to WB. Yeah. You know? So I think that is I think reason. WB should just release a, a good version every time instead of doing, <laughs> hey, exactly. let's un, let's cut it and make it shit and then release the good version later. But money is the biggest thing. <laughs> I mean, you figure how much will it cost to finish the VFX? Yeah, you know, and then couple thousand, couple hundred thousand. The music, you know, the music probably will needs they, touched up will and they whatnot. Have to to pay Junkie XL to come back. Yeah. Or did they pay him for the job? Did they, did they say, okay, you're here? And then once Whedon got in, was like, no, no, here's your money. See you, thanks, but no yeah. thanks. Here's Danny Elfman. And what did that then do to Danny Elfman's relationship with Warner Brothers? Yeah. You know, like, there's so much to think about it that people were like, yeah, I just want a Zack Snyder version. Yes, I would love to see it too, but there's but, so many things Yeah, there's with. so many X factors yeah. and millions of dollars to be played with there. Exactly, and that's the thing that... And just, for the fact that it won't, wouldn't be in theaters... Unless they would Unless make they a release, because th- they did release the extended cut of Batman vs Superman in theaters. I want to say it was for like a day or two, but they did release it in theaters. So, but would it make enough money with the DVDs to pay off basically what they I had mean, to do to fix their fuck up? I mean, you figure say they say they just make an extended cut and sell it separately for thirty five bucks a pop. Say a hundred thousand people buy it, you know, you look at three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is that right? Is that my math right? Right there. I so, don't think it is. You know, I mean, 35 bucks a pop, you know, okay, whatever. That's what you get if 100,000 people buy it. Yeah, no, never mind, you're right. Yeah, so is that enough to cover the cost of everything? That might not be because then yeah. you have to think about how much does it cost to create the discs and everything like that. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that goes like, into it. 
Now, well, speaking of Danny Elfman, um, I know you're a huge fan of him. Oh yeah, mm, yeah. He, rest he, in did, sp- he didn't fuck up Justice League one bit. No, not at all. With his <laughs> shitty score. Rest in spaghetti headphone users, never forget him. Yeah. Fuck Danny Elfman. It's okay. so hard. So speaking of Elfman, he stated in an interview that he was rushed to make the score for the film and was even at times scoring to storyboards as the reshoots were not completed while he was working. Look, I don't care if you're shooting, if you're scoring to Bugs Bunny running across the screen. A good score is a good score and a yeah. bad score is a bad score. It doesn't matter. It doesn't That's matter. not an and, excuse. And I think it's an excuse. I think he's just trying because I think people are realizing the score was not that good. And he's like, I gotta cover my ass. No. No. Dude, you fucked up. Yeah, like, you it was... suck. Please just leave. <laughs> it was not a good score. It just it just wasn't. So um, I, I think, you know, honestly, he's just trying to make excuses. And uh, <laughs> Women. <laughs> did you see, I posted this in, in the group uh, Thursday, maybe. Okay. Um, but it was the ending of Justice League. So the moment where oh yeah no Lois you is, tagged like everybody yeah, in it Lois is typing and you know writing um, oh my god the, that the, score was phenomenal and they added the Man of Steel theme that Hans Zimmer created in that moment and you know, there were a couple parts where it was playing it didn't fit exactly but I couldn't believe the perfect moment was at the end whenever you know Clark is is on the street and he hears yeah. something and turns and he rips his shirt open and he fit. flies off fucking perfectly dude it was fantastic. oh way better than uh. Elfman's original oh, score. Oh, yeah, and that's what I said. Like, <laughs> if you're not going to use Junkie XL, why bring in somebody who cannot do the tone that was set in the previous exactly. two films? That's the whole thing that... If, if that worst comes to worst, just say, hey, Junkie, hey, Hans, thanks, we gave you money for these, these uh, this music, it's our music, but we're going to be using this music in Justice League. Thanks, see you later. Yeah, and be, here's and your rights. <laughs> yeah, and, and just been, been done with it. No, they brought in Elfman, which in many regards it ruined moments of the movie for me the comedy ruined moments so. of that movie so like I said there is a petition um, that it has well over 100,000 signatures now here is the problem it has been reported today in a reputable YouTuber uh, named John Campy I'm sure some people have heard of him some maybe have not he used to work for Collider on YouTube and stuff like that but uh, he was reporting that he heard that there are many signatures on this petition that are falsified. That, you know, actual, these people whose names are on it did, act, did not actually sign this petition. And he stated that he was included on this petition that he never signed. And that he got a confirmation email from uh, whatever the, the site is. And he was like, I never signed the petition. So something's going on there now here's the thing guys if you're if you're listening to this and you happen to be the one that's falsifying these signatures fucking stop it because you're just bad do, publicity you're just ruining it you're 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 ruining it if we would have if we would get 50,000 signatures legitimate signatures legit, legitimate signatures there's a better chance of wb saying okay we'll release it whereas if you do 100,000 signatures where half of them are not legitimate they're going to say well we don't care because half of them are real. How do we know the rest aren't real or real? You know, like that's the kind yeah. of the way that they're going to look at it. So just stop it. Just stop it. That's stop. Stop. Uh, I think that's it for that. Now there was, okay, here's some interesting things. So a little bit of spoilers for justice league. If you haven't seen it, uh, there was never a black suited Superman in any cut of the film per a WB insider posting on Reddit. That's upsetting. Yeah, um, it is. I think so because what was that thing that Henry Cavill posted on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. literally a, just a giant middle finger just, to the fans. I mean, it, it's a perfect opportunity to show it. And again, there's many things that comic book fa- fans want explanations for things, but that's just something that people would have been happy to see. They would have not needed to be an explanation. They're just they can show it in the black suit. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Fucking a. Yeah. Exactly. Like fuck yeah. I would have been down. Yeah. Um, I would have been down with I mean, the black. It, it would have been simple enough to just bury him in his black Superman suit. That yes. was his father's, uh, you know, underneath the suit that he was wearing or something. You know? Yeah. Boom. There's your explanation. Boom. Done. No, yeah. no need to explain it. Uh, so there's that. <coughs> uh, then the mid and post credit scenes of Justice League were some of the best in history in my mind. Um, however, we almost got something completely different for the post credit scene. We would have seen two Green Lanterns, Kilowog and Tomar Ray, visit Bruce Wayne. Or as I wrote on here, Bryce Wayne, because I didn't spell check. 
No, so that what, one's what, not. What, that one I'm not feel like censoring out later. What would you have felt with the Green Lanterns? Would you like to have seen two random Green Lanterns go to Bruce Wayne and talk to him? My guess, because it doesn't explain what it was, could they be trying to offer him a ring? Could they be trying to, yeah. to recruit him? Who knows? Or maybe they could be like, "What happened here?" Yeah. Or, or do you prefer what we got with Joe Manganiello as Deathstroke and Lex Luthor? I like the Deathstroke that and Lex Luthor. I th- Luthor is it Thur or it's Thor? It's Luthor because Luthor. there's an O. I like to say I like to say Luthor because it's a callback to the original <laughs> Superman movie mm-hmm. where uh, Lex Luthor's. Uh, um, I like to say Thor, but says Thor there. Well, no. Uh, but his like little partner in crime or whatever, he goes, Mr. Luthor! Mr. Luthor! So that's why I like to say Luthor all the time. That rest in spaghetti head fun users. <laughs> um, I was content with what we got. I yeah. think it's going to set it up better than just two random Green Lanterns. Besides, spoiler, the one that we got in the flashback scene was more than enough for me. Did I was see, content with did it. Did you see, like, I mean, I knew that we saw... Zeus in the flashback scene. Yes. Uh, but, you know, then they had the bow, the one who was shooting the bow and arrow, that was Artemis. And supposedly, and I, I don't remember saying, I got to go back and watch it again. Uh, there's a scene where we actually see um, Ares. Yeah, no, Ares was there. So I didn't see that part. Now I've seen like clips of it, like, hey, this is Ares there. And I'm like, huh? Yeah, no. No, the Ares was there. So that that's pretty badass. You had the original gods, you know, the original Greek gods. And and, and the f- the fact that like Ares and Wonder Woman have beef too. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're brother and sister. Spoilers, they're brother and sister. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought that was cool. I I, I think that's cool. Did you see the uh, Catwoman Easter egg? Yeah, I know a lot of people. Think that one was that, a very subtle one. Yeah, I, a lot of people think that the the woman at the end of the movie that they're yeah right behind uh, yeah, Wonder Woman when she does that. Is actually, Cat, I don't think that is. I think it's just a nod, like "Hey, cat burglar," you know that kind of thing is all I think it is. Uh, but then there's also the the little the little tidbit at the beginning of the movie, you know, when there's the the cameras the the phone cameras on Superman, like "Hey, have you ever fought a hippopotamus or whatever it was," you mm-hmm. know, and uh, the the boy actually shooting or asking the questions or whatever is Billy Batson because mm. the girl in the background says, Hey Billy, stop it. And it makes sense because Billy Batson looks up to Superman because yeah. he's a kid, you know, and he's like, he yeah, that's his hero. Superman. So the fact that if that's true, if that really is, I would love it. Now, personally, I, that like thinking about it, I hate that that scene's in the beginning of the movie. Personally, I would have loved if that was at the end of the movie or well, maybe like, make it a, a third post credit scene or something like that. I thought it fit well. Because I just, it, it kind of throws you off because you have that and then boom, you open up to the Batman stuff. And it's like, I don't know. It was like, meant to be, a, well, if it was meant to be a nod to he's dead. Like, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, But I still have that. If it is actually Billy Batson, that's mm. a hell of a cool thing because that was a Josh Whedon scene. Hats off to you, Joss, because that was great. Speaking of Joss Whedon scene, that opening Batman scene was all Josh yeah, Whedon. That was and a good scene. I thought it was Zack Snyder. I thought it had Zack Snyder written all over, especially that moment where he's he's jumping on the side of the water tower. Like that is a Josh or that is a Zack Snyder type of shot if there because mm. it's so like right out of the comic books. Yeah. And, but that was Josh Whedon. That whole scene was Josh Whedon. And the thing that scares me a little bit though is he wanted it to be more more comedic and WB execs were like, no. So uh, they had to tone down the comedic aspect and made it a little more dark, which I'm cool with. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of different. Um, um, did you see Jason Momoa? Is that from Momoa? Whatever. Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Confirm that theory from uh, Man of Steel. That he actually saved Clark at the, yeah. the oil rig, yeah. It's nice that they do little nods like that. Like, oh, yeah, I was there. I did that. Yeah. All right, uh, last bit of news before we get into our big topic, which, damn, we're already an hour in. Uh, last bit of news, uh, Josh Whedon is still on to direct the Batgirl film. All right, people, there's a rumor going around that, oh, because Justice League did so poorly, Josh Whedon is gone. He's not doing anything for DC anymore. It's not true. He's still on. He's actually currently you know, doing the script and writing the script and getting things ready for it, so... People, Josh Whedon isn't going anywhere. I still like the idea of him doing the Batgirl movie. I'm still a fan of his. I think what why this Justice League suffered with him, his input and his directing and such, I think what hurt it is because it was not his film. Yeah. You know, it's Zack Snyder's film that he then had to work on. Mm-hmm. Um, when Josh Whedon does his own film, 99% of the time it's a good movie. 
You know, I mean, it, it just is. Like, it, yeah. he's a good filmmaker. Uh, he knows how to build characters and everything like that. Like, the first Avengers is an amazing movie because of that. So, I like the idea of him doing Batgirl. I hope people still are okay with that because I would hate to see, you know, DC fans, because we know DC fans never lash out about things. Just like EA fans. <laughs> All right. So before we move on, I need to plug some things. Podbean, iTunes, Google Play. Hold on. Hold on. Sure. Plugged it into the wall. (laughs) You need to subscribe to us, follow us on all of those things there, because that's how you will get up-to-date notifications of when our new episodes come out. And check us out. You know, definitely leave reviews on iTunes, rate us on iTunes, because that's how we get bigger in that aspect. That's how our... People, our viewership will our viewership, our listenership will grow, and everything like that. We're also yeah, technically on, viewership too on YouTube. We have some viewership, but you have to subscribe on YouTube. The more subscribers we get there, the more you know content variety. you get. And yeah, we're definitely looking. We're going to probably shoot for the beginning of the year, closer to our one year anniversary. We're talking about what we're going to do, how we're going to start building on the brand of the remote control and moving forward. We have some big ideas. Hopefully, they can come to fruition. So you need to make sure that you follow, subscribe everywhere you can. Uh, yeah, it's going to be more than two people. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're looking at adding some more people. And hey, if you're listening, you want to jump in on the conversation and join in and possibly be on a podcast or YouTube or even just help us out with the Facebook group and the Twitter, let us know because we're always looking for help. We love the, the thing with this is it's a little bit different than other podcasts. A lot of podcasts are just like, this is our baby. We don't want anybody helping. This is for the fans. This is for people who love music, movies, TV, video games. This comics. is essentially a network. <laughs> that's, and that's what we're looking. We just want people to join in and have fun. So if you are interested in you want out, You want to talk about dicks and memes? I'm the guy for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to talk about things and, and get involved, message us. Join our Facebook group. Tell us what you want to do because if we can get you in there, if we can get you in some way, we will. We even have a waiting room now. <laughs> With that, um, I do want to just shout out uh, hashtag Pod Echo and hashtag Potter and Family on Twitter. There's two great little things to follow there because they really promote a bunch of podcasts, different podcasts that you may have never heard of before. If this is one of your first podcasts you're ever listening to, believe me, there are well, hundreds of thousands of way. more out there, and we've come a long way, yes. <laughs> but there's so many other podcasts out there that are excellent. You know, I talk about Nerd Talkalypse all the time, and Deej Penhalo, who runs that. He's, uh, I mean, Dude, I, his Christmas album. Oh, oh, oh my his God. Christmas album is fantastic. <laughs> uh, hats so. off to you. I applaud you because that was, that was beautiful. He released a, a free, I don't know if it's still free, but it was free the other day, a Christmas album, and it, it's fantastic. I've listened to it like six times. It is, it is so like the only Christmas music I will play ever. <laughs> like, it is it's beautiful. Excellent. Yeah, you need to check him out. His podcast, Nerdtocalypse, fantastic. I'm telling you. Excellent. He had, if he has Amazing confidence podcast. enough to do that, we should release our mix. <laughs> the, the difference is he has a good voice. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but again, Potter, Potter and Family and Pod Echo on Twitter. Check them out. Hashtag Pod Echo. Search for them. You're going to see so many different podcasts on there. You know, you have things from movies and music to, you know, a murder crime mystery and... to crime to just a whole bunch of different types of podcasts. Because I'm telling you, there's some great podcasts out there. And we just want to build the brand because podcasts are a thing of the the future as well as the present and they're huge and we want to keep growing not just us but the whole podcast community so check those out uh Deej Penhalo of Nerdtocalypse you know if it wasn't for a group on Facebook for podcast enthusiasts I would never have met him and started talking to him and he's one of the coolest people I ever talked to now so you know definitely check that out uh, with that last thing, we're going to talk about our giveaway for Star Wars talk. We mentioned a little bit earlier, but hey. let's go for it, Colton. So, we're releasing some shit. We're doing a giveaway. We are doing a Lay on a Speeder GameStop exclusive uh, giveaway, which I do have to pick up thinking about that. I went in there the other day, and they were like, yeah, no, we never got it from the factory. It was released like three days ago. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. To enter this, you can join the Facebook group. Uh follow us on instagram follow us on twitter subscribe to us on youtube uh i'm missing one follow us on podbean yeah here's subscribe to us on itunes write a review when you hit subscribe when you start following us let us know that way we can write your name down so you'll be entered in uh just to, to help us out a little bit instead of us having to dig and find you know yeah. dates when people add it and stuff like that just let us know like hey i heard your podcast i want entered in that's it yeah. that's all you need to say and we're, we're looking for the away. d that's all you need so 
uh, definitely tell us that. And I do want to call, you know, make a shout out to our Facebook group. The last few days, they have been fantastic. They've been interacting yeah. like no other. It's a lot of fun. It is getting to be a blast being a part of this this group on Facebook because. You know, we just have it's fun crazy to think, though, that like six months ago there was 50 people in that group. Yeah, yeah, we're up to almost 300 people. We want to hit 300. We, what we want to do, I would love, I know we got a month, I would love to hit 500 before the end of the year, man. That would be cool. If we could hit 500 before January 1st, it would be fantastic. I mean, it's a That's little a bit of an out there goal, but if we can, we I think we can definitely hit 400. We No, 400. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. I was like seven people. We got this. Yeah, now that's the, the crazy thing with our Facebook group is we do a lot of daily things. So like we have a movie Monday, video game Tuesday, album Wednesday, Wednesday TV show Thursday, and then we have a versus Friday where we'll put up two different things where we you know they face off against each other. We vote and talk about what we think should would win or should win that kind of thing. So we do a lot of cool things. Plus. You can post whatever you want entertainment-wise in the group. You can have fun with it. Just have a blast with the group. Talk to people. It, it, it's Any it, questions, ask someone. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, yeah, we don't want, like, ridiculously stupid, like, profanity crap. But you, there's, like, no content is barred, essentially. You yeah. Know? Like, if we see something that's out of... Like, super political, we, it's Yeah, cut. political's not cool, but, like, if it's... If it's something that's completely out there, like we don't want to see nudity on there because kids may get on yeah. and see things, but you know, keep it as as nice as possible. But yeah, I mean, there's times where you know, some some swearing happens, swearing and outrageous, outlandish type of things are talked about. It's okay, it happens, and it's fun as long. As I mean, I'm on here, yeah, so he's on there, so, and he shows some of the dankest memes. Dude, I, I get some some of that good <laughs> dank dank methamphetamine memes. You know what I'm saying? But with that said, uh, definitely. <laughs> join us up you know and and start talking and getting us out there you know we're gonna be making our our presence known over the next few months starting to go to a lot of cons in pittsburgh and stuff yeah. like that so uh, if you're from the pittsburgh, pittsburgh area, we might be going to uh star wars celebration next year as well 2019 2019 whatever no it's not Fuck. Yeah. thought it was 2018 nope, 2019 so we got a while still oh what? well that gives us more time to save what money <laughs> All right, so all of that out of the way. All of our plugs and stuff are gone out of the way. Thank goodness, because people hate hearing that stuff. That was a good, solid eight-minute plug. <laughs> um, all right, so. so Justice League came out. And prior to Justice League coming out, people were excited for the movie. Yes, and then super hyped. And then the movie comes out, and it goes... <laughs> You know, the first weekend... It quote-unquote shits the bed. Doesn't hit $100 million like it should have. I mean, it should have been a hundred million dollar first weekend movie, and it didn't hit that. It hit what ninety four million, ninety five million. Something. Which, like I mean, that. it's still pretty close, but. So, you might say, um, I'm only going to be talking about this subject because of how poorly received Justice League was by the critics. Uh, but personally, I really think that this is a real issue in Hollywood, and what I'm talking about is Rotten Tomatoes or Metacritic or Screen Rant and stuff like that. The websites that actually rate films. You know, IMDB. IMDB could be a problem. I They're not as much of a problem. No, they're pretty fair. Now, Justice League is not a perfect film by any means. Does it deserve a higher score than the 41% that it currently sits in Rotten Tomatoes? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Absolutely deserves a higher percentage than 41%. Easily at least 75. So answer me this. Okay, this. So... Back 10 years ago, 2007. All right. Now, yes, I know this is 2000, 10, 2007. 2007. Do right. you keep in mind, I was 11. A movie came out called Spider-Man 3. <sighs> Sam, oh, you, you hear that, kids? You hear that? You Wait, hear, kids? <laughs> you hear I'm how more you... than likely the youngest person here. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, what, I mean, that movie was horrendous. Tell me what score they got. I know you didn't look. And this is kind of a trivia question. What I'm score gonna say do you think it has? Something tell me 91%. No, it's not quite that high. It has a 63%, which means it's fresh. Because a 60% or higher is fresh. Spider-Man 3, which is a complete mess of a movie that the studio, Sony, was they had their hands all over. Was It's just a mess. It was Sam Raimi wanted out of the business of Spider-Man because of how little freedom he had in Spider-Man 3. That's why he wanted, he wanted to be done. Like, I'm done with it. You go to 63%, and that's not worse than Justice League? Come on. That movie is exactly far worse than Justice League is. And Answer me this. Okay, this. All right, so let me pull this up on my phone here real quick. So there's other movies. You can go on Rotten Tomatoes and see, okay, oh, this has this score. This has this score. You know, blah, blah, blah. 
And, <coughs> you know, it, it boggles my mind when you it, go on, on to Rotten Tomatoes. Does and it really chap your ass? <laughs> you find a movie on there that is complete trash. Mm-hmm. Sharknado, what do you think it's... Oh, dear God. It's probably got like a 62. 82%. And you're going to tell me that that is a better movie than Justice League. That is just trash. Like, uh, again, that is, Sharknado, that is... yeah, Sharknado is a funny movie. It, the concept, the idea is funny. The, the actors and actresses in it are on their last leg of being actors and actresses. They have nothing else to live for but to yeah. try and act in shitty movies. So it makes it a little funny. But the movie's not good. No, it's not it's, good in any way. I've like, seen this. The special I've, effects are ass. So then you can sit there and say, okay, well, going into it, that movie was made for $100,000. So, yeah, the special effects are going to be ass. And it was made for TV. Then you look at Justice League that had $300 million budget. Why does it so, Why does it look so bad? That's not what should be determining these movies. It shouldn't be like, well, this movie was made on TV and this movie was made for theaters. So, you know, this one is obviously going to get a higher score, even though it's shit. No, that's, yeah, no, that doesn't make fucking sense. No, it doesn't. You're really trying to chat my ass, Bob. <laughs> You're really trying. Once I get this cough drop in my mouth. So, if you asked me before Rotten Tomatoes score came out, which came out the day before Justice League released. So, if you asked me before that came out, I would have said and guessed that Justice League would have probably gotten between a 70 and 75%. And that was just from the hype that I was hearing on social media, because the social mm. media embargo lifted a few days earlier. And from what I was hearing on social media, people loved it. People were excited to talk about it. I figure, look, I know it's not going to be a 90%. I know it's not going to be an 80% because... Yeah, it's not going to be an outrageously good film. No, but I figure it's going to be a damn good film. I figured it's 70, 75%. That's what I figured. Not the 41. And there was a point in time where it was down to 39%. Like, what the fuck? Like, I, I, I don't know. So, we then see these reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. And in my opinion, a lot of them are unjust in their description of why they dislike the movie. So, you want me to chop your ass a little more, kid? Yeah, kid. I'm... You're not my dad. <laughs> but they are... All right. Okay. So this is what the critics are saying on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm actually going to call out these critics specifically. Because... Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's just clear the air. They're all fucking retarded. <laughs> Sorry, I offended. I used the hard no. R. These one, two, three, four, five, I think, are the worst that I found on there. Now, I understand. I'm going to say this before I go. I do understand that these are short little snippets of reviews, and that they have links on the reviews to take them, take you to their main outlet. You know, whether it's a newspaper or a magazine, to read their full review there. I get that, but you can fit more words than what I'm about to tell you. These reviews are. So J.R. Jones of the Chicago Reader. So Mr. J.R. Jones, if you're listening to this, please message me because I want to know where you get your credentials for saying this amazing review. The movie is a clumsy steamer trunk of continuing storylines and returning stars. That's it. That's his review on Rotten Tomatoes. So you jump on Rotten Tomatoes and you, you see that that's a top critic. That's not just a rim. That's a top critic on Rotten Tomatoes. And that's what he says. The movie is a clumsy steamer trunk of continuing storylines and returning stars first off what the fuck does it mean <laughs> so okay okay hold on here i'm gonna break this down real fucking quick it's a superhero film that is in its own universe right yeah and and it's a it's a joint film where all the superheroes get together correct yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah so you want fucking new characters <laughs> Fucking a new villain. Oh man, we got the return. Everybody came back. God, oh, man. son of a bitch. Son Superman bitch. didn't stay oh. dead. They didn't kill Batman in between. Wonder Woman didn't die of oh, old age. Look, these these storylines are so clumsy. Batman, you know, last movie, you know, hated Superman, and by the end of the movie, he, you know, he thought he was a symbol of hope. He still thinks it's, uh, he's a symbol of hope. Oh, oh that's a clumsy. Oh Jesus Christ! Line. Jesus Christ! Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, like. Do you have his address? I or, wish I did. Where are you going to go? We're going to fucking go to Chicago because this right, apparently right, we got to kick someone's ass now. Here's the next one. Jonathan L. Fisher. Nope, I got to take the wallet out of the pocket. You know I'm talking loud because you can hear Jonathan me and I'm over L. here. Jonathan L. Fisher of the outlet Slate. Even the strength <clears throat> of Superman couldn't turn this ship all the way around. <clears throat> all the way around. That's okay, it. Okay, right there. There's no ship in the fucking movie. <laughs> it's just so, not a good pun. <laughs> so, like, you could go at home and dress up as Batman, hang yourself in your closet while you beat your meat because you're going to die alone. 
But but again, like, all right, even the strength of Superman. So are you saying that the Superman scenes when he came back made the movie better? Like, be a little more descriptive in your your criticism and in, in what you're saying. I understand that you want people to go to your outlet and read more and read your entire review. But like, if I was if I'm going myself, if I'm going on Rotten Tomatoes and I'm like. I see this. Movie's clumsy steamer. Nope. It doesn't give me enough information. Right. There's the problem because you shouldn't go to Rotten Tomatoes to be like, oh, do I want to watch this film? Yeah. No. If you want to see a film, go fucking watch it. Don't go see reviews first. Bob Grimm of the Tuscan or the Tucson, Tucson Weekly, of the Tucson Weekly, man, oh man, does this movie look bad. That's it. That's his little critique and review of the movie on Rotten Tomatoes. Hey, hey, yeah, guess this is what the fuck we're doing wrong. We got to do excellent film. <laughs> Feeling I got you. Fantastic film. One of the best films. <laughs> it is the most amazing film you will ever see. The great, the the most fantastic film. <laughs> what are you doing? All right. You didn't see that gif of him drinking water? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Ali Gray of... Now, this, this is an interesting... Because this is a critic on... On Rotten Tomatoes that people look at. Okay. Nice. Allie Gray of the shiznit.co. <laughs> this is a critic on Rotten Tomatoes. Bob, I thought we were going to talk about this. Not a fucking roast sesh. <laughs> yeah, that's a real name. I actually put that in parentheses. Yeah, that's a real website. She goes, or he, I don't know, Ali, I'm guessing is a girl. It wasn't evil aliens that defeated the Justice League. It was facial hair. Eh. Okay, okay. Yes, the whole CGI of his of his. But you don't see that. that in any of the promo stuff at all. No, and not only that, but I mean, are you going to decide to not see a movie because of bad facial hair removal? Yeah, because I got that kind of rot up my ass. Like, I... it just uh, come on. S- screeches and all. And the final one that I'm going to talk is for or talk is going to mention is Christopher Michelle of Cineview. The true villain of this film is the corporate nihilism that willed Justice League into existence. That one was better than the other ones. What does it say about the movie? Nothing, but at least he kind of gave a reason. Not They did bad CGI on a mustache. When you do a review, you should talk about the movie. Again, yes. I know that there are links to then go to their full reviews on their websites, but... I'm not gonna sit there and see these. None of these, sh- none of these make me excited to go look at what they wrote. You know, yeah, this because is just it's like, a poorly written summary of it. To man, begin oh man, with. does this movie look bad? Okay, so you didn't like the CGI, but what about the story? Screw you, I'm not looking at yours. It was in Evil Aliens that defeated the Justice League. It was facial hair. Okay, I know that there was facial hair removal. I didn't expect it to be great, so I'm not gonna read that one. Even the strength of Superman couldn't turn his ship all the way around. Uh, so Superman's back. Thanks for um, spoiling the movie for me. Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, like this shit. This is what you get on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's that's what's wrong with today's society. We we are too focused on does everybody else like it instead of just going and doing our own fucking thing because we're all conformists. So I, I get now that there, there is an audience score on Rotten Tomatoes as well, which is higher than obviously because it's the critic score. You know, we don't have our heads up our fucking asses. But I sit there and think about it and take a look at it, and I say, okay, look. So, yes, yeah, so you can go to Rotten Tomatoes and say, screw the critics. I'll look at what the audience says. Okay, that's fine. I get that. But why Why do we have to rely on websites? Exactly. Why? Okay, so what do you think we could do? What do you think could be done to fix this problem? I want to ask you this before I answer my own question. Um, I'm going to give you an honest opinion here. I think there's nothing because society has been so dumbed down over the years that... We can't independently think anymore. And that's There's a select few people that can independently think and do their own thing. That's my personal opinion on it. Reality? There's honestly not much. Like, it's now, pl- word by ears, basically it. Okay, now, I would be a little remiss, and it would be unfair if I didn't mention something like this, the flip side of things. Blade Runner 2049 received an 87% score by the critics and it would vastly underperformed at the box office. All right, so a movie that I have yet to see because <laughs> I haven't even watched the first Blade Runner completely. Yes, I'm sorry. I he just, who shall not be named actually enjoyed that film. Uh, but it got an 87% and it underperformed at the box office. I think that had more to do with marketing rather than that, but that's my own opinion on it. 
Uh, so maybe no one really looks at the critic scores. Maybe they look at the fan scores. I don't know. Like that's When you look at the flip side of things, you might be able to see the differences here. However, in my opinion, in this day and age, this day and age, all right, I don't think any movie should be scored or rated until it is has been released and the public has had a chance to see it. Exactly. So Rotten Tomatoes, yes, allow your critics to rate it and everything like that, but... They should not. You, Rotten Tomatoes should not release their scores, their even and, their their reviews until, until the, the week, Monday. Yeah, I was gonna say it give it that out. weekend. So it comes out Thursday or Friday. Gives it a shot. That Monday, because all the people that are gonna see it are gonna see it that weekend. You know, yeah. who want to see it? Allow the marketing team of the movie pump up the movie. Allow them to do what they want to do. If they feel that they have a great movie on their hands, they want to say, "Look, you know, we're gonna pump up the movie." Maybe allow. That you know, maybe Rotten Tomatoes pick out like three of your top critics, like your absolute top critics. Oh, where, where's where's that lady's name at the Shiznit? <laughs> uh, from the Shiznit, yeah, not the Shiznit.co.uk. Don't use that, but get some like three top critics and just say, look, what do you think? And you put those three scores. You don't put a score. You don't put a final score. You just don't even put a score. You just say, what did you think of the movie? And make them have to post two hundred and fifty words or a hundred yeah. words of a little bit like at that's least. what exactly in in that way you're gonna get at least a decent amount yeah of you're gonna understanding you're not gonna I, get i get better reviews on 280 characters on twitter than we got here yeah and that's a reliable source exactly well reliable reliable quote unquote so again let the marketing departments and the studios hype up the film it's not ron tomato's job to hype up the film it's not you know, uh, Metacritic. It's not Screen Rant. It's not us. <laughs> it, but exactly, it's the marketing and the studio's job to hype up these films. You know, exactly. the fans. Yes, the fans of the franchises can hype it up as well. But guess what? The fans haven't seen it. So exactly. Them to hype it up. You know, like, we don't. I, we don't know. Leading up to Justice League, uh, social media was crazy when it comes to Justice League. It, I, it spoiled it for you. Uh, no, that was Facebook that spoiled a little bit for me. And that was ComicBook.com or ComicBook. Yeah, it was ComicBook.com. Which fuck you. But <laughs> wow. <laughs> But that's the thing. Like, you know, I, I sit there and take a look, and it's just, come on, people. Like, I, I really believe that this is hurting cinema today. Like, we should not be relying on websites to tell us what to see and what not to see. Back in the day, there was a thing called a newspaper that would come out, and your local, you know, uh, writers and, and, and reviewers of movies would put a little blurb in the in the comics, in the, in the newspaper. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. But in the, in the newspaper, you know, you, you know, it might be... You know, a half a sheet, or it might be a little column, or something. Yeah. Whatever, and however big the movie was, they would talk about it, and that would come out a week, a few days before the movie came out. You know. And that was it. That's it. Like that's how people got their reviews, and then eventually TV came out, and or it didn't come out, but shows came out like Entertainment Weekly or Cisco and Ebert, and you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm. started coming out, and they would start having their rating systems, the two thumbs up and stuff like that. Again, that that worked because they were actually two reputable reputable. Um, critics who you could rely on and yeah there are times when I disagreed with Cisco and Ebert when they would review a film but for the most part you know I agreed with what they said and, mm -hmm. and I and I respected them they weren't from the shiznit.co.uk right there you should not be a reputable person for the unprofessionalism of your name uh, yeah, that's that's just the craziness about everything you know and why do we allow this to happen? Why why is Hollywood allowing it to happen? Like Warner Brother actually owns a stake in Rotten Tomatoes. Like they they Yeah, and they're sh they're shooting themselves in the foot. That's the thing. They, but here's the thing, at this point, if they go, "Hey, no, we're not going to release anything." That then people are going to be like, "Oh, look, Rotten or, or Warner Brothers is controlling Rotten Tomatoes so their movies don't get looked bad upon." Mm. So they can't be the ones that push it forward. There's going to have to be somebody else that in Hollywood it's like let a Marvel let a Marvel film do bad. Yeah, I mean, you're, like, you're right. But that's the thing. Marvel movies never going to do bad to the critics because they they're have... They're fucking stupid. They they're the same thing. They for the same thing over and over and over again because... Basically. No, they don't have any open minds for originality. You know, that, that's the problem. And all that's, people all people want are original things. That's what people like. We need more original movies in the world. And I'm not saying that Batman for Superman or Justice League was an original movie because by no stretch they are because they, they aren't because they, they come from comic books. They stem from something that isn't original, yeah. you know, that was original at one time but isn't any longer. But, I mean, it's different. They were trying to do something different than the Avengers did. They, you know, yes, it's the same concept of superheroes teaming up and, you know, getting together. 
but they were doing it a different way than Marvel did because people were complaining about wanting more original things, something yeah. different. They don't want the same old, same old. So they and start then, to do it, and they get yeah. shit on. Yeah, that's what's wrong with today's society. Exactly. We bitch and bitch and bitch, and then we get what we want, and we bitch some more. Exactly. It's just it's nonstop <clears throat> bitching, and it's yeah. getting out of hand, and it's going to hurt Hollywood. More. Fucking millennials. And, and it may hurt the... Uh, I don't know. I, uh, this probably... Uh, but it's going to hurt Hollywood. Yeah, uh, Not more than the sexual allegations that have been going on, but it's going to hurt In Hollywood. the long run, this is going to shit on Hollywood. Because we're going to get good films that are going. no one's going to go see, and then we're going to eventually dwindle down to the same shit all the time. Yeah. Where we're basically at now. Exactly. And look, I enjoy the Marvel films, but I haven't seen a Marvel film that has blown me away since the first Guardians of the Galaxy. That's because that's the first one that was different since... Iron Man and Avengers. Yeah. Like, you know, that was like... When I look at it, you know, those are some of my big three, four movies. Iron Man, Avengers, Winter Soldier, and, and, and uh, Guardians. Like, all those four movies are the four most different movies in that universe. Like, Iron Man isn't different now... But it was the first of its kind yeah. for that franchise. You know, Avengers was the first team-up movie, and it was just fantastic and fun. Winter Soldier was like, here's a superhero movie, but it's a spy thriller. Like, oh, yeah. shit, you know? And then Guardians of the Galaxy was just... Just fucking, fucking Guardians fun. of the Galaxy. <laughs> it was just fun! <coughs> Since then, Marvel has literally put out the same movie. Just copy and paste, copy and paste, yeah, copy and different paste. characters. That's it. And that's what people like, and if that's what you like, whatever... I enjoy them. It's fun to see where these characters are going, but mostly it's all the same. I know yeah. I can predict everything that has happened up till now, basically. That's what separates seeing a movie once to seeing a movie four or five times. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I have no intentions of ever seeing Guardians of the Galaxy 2 again. No intentions. Yeah. Because I just... It, it's one of those films, if it's on TV, yeah, I'll watch it. Yeah. If nothing else is on, I'll watch it. I'll go out of my way to watch the first one. I'll go yeah. out of my way to watch Iron Man 1 or The Avengers. I will. Captain America Civil War. Or not Civil War. Uh, Winter Soldier. Definitely go out of my way to watch it. Yeah. Civil War I've seen three times. I don't want to see it again. Because each time I watch it, it just got worse and worse. <laughs> I saw more flaws and more flaws. Like, I'm not going to see Civil <laughs> War again. It, but that's the thing. Like, everything is just a copy, 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 yeah. copy. And it just moves forward. And if that's what you guys want, awesome. But, you know, in five years, ten years, whenever when, everything is the same exact thing. And you're when, bitching, yeah. and bitching and bitching. That, that you can look back to this moment when you bitched. <laughs> yeah, or when you, yeah, when, yeah, look, I, I, I don't know. Fucking millennials. <laughs> I'll say it. Yeah, I, I mean, you're right. I mean, for the most part, it is millennials. It really is, because it wasn't like this before. You you want your cake and you want to eat it, too. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, like, we wouldn't have gotten a Justice League that was so screwed up from Josh Whedon and the studio if it wasn't for Rotten Tomatoes and the critics and stuff like exactly. that. Because you think about it, when Batman vs. Superman came out, you know, people were fucking excited about it. And yes, the theatrical cut was rough. But I bet you it would have done a bit better if not for Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I believe that. I believe that. I, I don't want to call out Rotten Tomatoes constantly because there are other sites that do the same thing. But, I don't know, I just feel like this 87% or this 41% or 49% or, you know, whatever percentage they give these movies, it's, where are you getting these numbers? Why are you getting these numbers? Who are they coming from? Are these people reputable? Are they, should they be somebody who's able to rate on these movies? Like, that's yeah. what I'm getting at. You know, like, get some good people. Get five people. Get ten people. Most top critics who you trust. Who the people trust, who people <clears throat> like, whether they're YouTubers, you know, maybe pull something from a YouTube, a podcast, something like that. Get these people together who's a comic book fan, who's not a comic book fan. Mm -hmm. You know, get 10, 15 people most and say, okay, you are our main critics for Rotten Tomatoes this year. Mm -hmm. So when the movie comes out, you need to see these movies and you need to give us a review of X amount of words. And then mm -hmm. the week after it comes out, you will have a rating in what we will rate the movie. I agree. We have to adjust how things are done. So Hollywood can move forward. You know, because take a look at what ju happened with Justice League. And this is the big reason why I'm saying this. The movie came out, made $94 million opening weekend. That Tuesday, <clears throat> the it jumped up from day to day. It jumped up 45%. Yeah. All right. That Tuesday. Wednesday, it didn't jump up, but it steadily made more money. Internationally, it's doing fantastic. Domestically, it's not doing so great. However, it has been steady since mm -hmm. the initial weekend so something about that weekend it was after that weekend where fans were like yeah this movie rocks that people were like alright let's go watch it now because yeah. the fans like it the critics don't those people who were waiting for that that Monday 
you know, if they would have waited to release the scores until that Monday, they would have released the scores with the fan buzz, and there may not have been any drop. Yeah. Maybe it would have still made the $94 million. Maybe it still would have <clears throat> then jumped up on Tuesday. But give the movie a chance. Yeah. Don't kill a movie before it comes out. And that's what happened here. And, you know, I talked about this last week. You know, Rotten Tomatoes launched this new video, Facebook Live or Facebook show or something like that, where it's like, see it or skip it or something like that. It was terrible. The hosts are horrible. They sit there and they don't talk about the movie how they should because it's impossible without spoiling a movie. Mm. So why are they going to do a show like that where you talk about a movie that could potentially have a lot of spoilers and you're like, oh, there was a scene and I know we didn't like the scene but you know they're like, there's a scene. Oh man, those words. Um, you know, you smell good. And they're like, yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, you got to skip this movie. Like, you're just why like yes that that line sucked in the movie i didn't like it you didn't like it but that's not what should matter that's not yeah, that's, that doesn't ruin the entire movie five, five seconds is not going to ruin two hours exactly and and that's the problem that, that i see and jar jar binks can ruin two and a half hours yes and and that's that again i that's my problem i just think that the the way that we review and criticize movies and these sites and outlets release information i think they need to adjust on how they do it and how that's going to happen is the studios the studios are going to have to sit there and say look there's an embargo until this date mm -hmm. you know so once they put that embargo up then okay that's it there's yeah, you can't do anything now the problem where these sites and companies are going to come back at you at them the studios are going to be like look once the fans see the movie they're not going to there's not going to be traffic to our sites to read these reviews it's kind of the point yeah, you know, whether not the movie a... is good or bad, if people want to hear what the critics say, they're gonna wait and read what the critics say. Yeah, no matter what, you know. But it's yeah, one critic over all of your friends being like, "Hey, that's a good movie." I can give two fucks less what exactly. the critic says. So there's gotta be some happy medium. Hopefully, they figure out a way to do it because yes, it sucked for Justice League. Again, this isn't just about Justice League. You know, this really isn't about that. It's I, about I, fucking Sharknado getting. Yeah. that 85 percent. Like, come on for fuck's sake come on it's a fucking tornado with fucking sharks in it. and tara reed or tara reed or whatever the hell her name is like who hasn't done anything good ever in her whole career she was in american pie just because she looked hot and that's pretty much all she did in her life <laughs> like i'm not lying it's like megan fox but yeah pretty ne much. neither here nor there so, uh, again, look. So here's our message to you, Hollywood. Get your fucking shit together. Yeah, Hollywood and you know, <coughs> movie sites. Now, what do you guys think? I know I went on a rant about Justice League and stuff like that, but what do you think? What do you think? Do you think it's hurting Hollywood? Do you think it could help Hollywood if they change it? Let us know in the comments below on Facebook, blah, 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 all that fun stuff that I mentioned earlier because we want to hear from you. We want to know what you think. Definitely want to let you know that. Uh, one more thing before we start wrapping this up here. Uh... The giveaway for the magazine that Donald Booth from Crunchum's, Crunchum's Custom Cosplay, uh, the magazine is Cosplay Culture, um, is still going on. We will announce the winner next week's show. Absolutely next week's show. Uh, I just wasn't able to get with Donald this week and find out uh, who actually did like his page and everything like that. So I have to get with him over the next few days and get that okay. out. So, um you know, if you want to like it now, between now and next Monday, go for it because I will get with him to make sure that he tells me who liked it and everything like that, and we will give it away. We'll give it away now. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Uh, make sure you check out Star Wars Talk this week. It'll be released probably this Friday. Check it out. We're going to talk some things about Ryan Johnson on his new trilogy, which we talked a lot about that last week. <laughs> he, he had some things in a fan favorite character from the original trilogy will not be showing up in The Last Jedi. So no. find out why on this week's Star Wars talk, which releases this Friday, this upcoming Friday morning. R really nice fucking promo. So, with that said, again, let us know what you think of everything that we talked about today. Again, we want you all involved in joining and having some fun. But today, I will bid you all farewell and talk to you next weekend. I have been Robert, and with me as always is Colton Bird. Hey. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.